if you think of building a live streaming app as soon as possible by considering its speed and efficiency as your first trial, I recommend Zigocular Live Streaming Kit for everyone who wanted to build such an app. So don't waste time rebuilding some basic features, which could have just been a single import statement. Zigocular comes with a live streaming kit, which is a feature-rich live stream component and enables you to build custom live streaming into your apps with only a few lines of code. And you can also customize it as well by configuring the parameters. So today's video, I'd like to show you how to implement some basic live stream in your app. So first of all, we need to add Zego UI kit pre-built live streaming as a dependency to our app and also import that as well. We then proceed to the admin console to get the app ID and also the app sign of our project. I've already created my Flutter project in here and it's basically returning a home widget and the home return a test build a live streaming app that has been wrapped within a center widget. So that's basically it. Let's proceed by adding the Zego UI kit pre-built live streaming as a dependency. So once that has been added to the passport.yml file, we are good to go. So basically the passport.yml file is where we get to see our installed dependencies. So let's copy below the above widget that's a live page that basically returned the Zego UI kit pre-built live streaming widget. So let's paste it below the home page and import the Zego UI kit pre-built live streaming. And also we need to get our app ID and also the app sign as well. So in here we need to head towards the admin console. We need to create a project for that. I have a video on the video and voice call up. So in today's tutorial, we focus on the live streaming app. So you need to choose a live streaming app and also click on the next button to proceed. So in here, we need to give the name of our app. I'll be naming it as live streaming app and start with the UI kit. So it will start creating your live streaming app project. So once it's done, you need to start building your app and choose the platform i'll go for flutter in here and also save and start to integrate there we go so you can see our app id and also our app sign here so i'll grab that and paste there we go you can decide to change the username as well So here I'll change it to that and also the username as well. So once you're done, okay. So within our Android app folder, we need to change the compile SDK version to 33. So within the Android folder, we have the app folder, the builder gradle, then we change the compiled SDK version to 33 and saving the changes. We also need to add the following permissions to the Android manifest.sml. So within the Android folder, within the app, within the source, the main, we have the Android manifest.sml and add the following permissions and saving the changes. There we go. We also need to create a ProGuard roots file. So I'll copy that in here. And that one should be created within the app folder. So within the Android app, you right click and create a new file. And I'm going to name that file as ProGuard roots.pro and copy it below the content and paste it within that. There we go saving the changes one more step we need to add the flowing content to the release part of the build.gradle that's found within the android app folder so you copy that so within your app we have the build.gradle the release part we add the code there and saving the changes
if you are on windows and you are setting up permissions on ios you are not going to see the port file you can create one yourself and paste in the above code and also add the permissions to the info playlist within the runner folder that's it So let's get rid of the text in here and return the column. So the column in turn also taking the children as a property, so which accepts array of widgets. So, and the first widget is going to be the elevated button. Which has an unpressed and also a chart attribute. So within the unpressed, it takes in a function and we're going to return a method that's going to jump to the live page so jump to live page which is not yet created let's pass in the contest and also a boolean of its host and initially passing true the chart is basically going to return a test widget with some test within it and the test is going to be start live So I'll copy that once more and that's going to be watch live and its host is going to be false. So let's create the jump to live page method. So I'll copy that in here. So jump to live which takes in the build contest and also there is host boolean So let's set the main axis alignment of the column to main axis alignment dot center so we can have the two buttons within the center of our app as you can see it over there so basically within the jump to live page we are going to navigate to the live page so we use navigator dot push which is in the context and also the route the material page route that's the anonymous routing method which takes in the builder and the builder in turn also takes in the context and we are going to return to the live page and the live page taking takes in the live id and also the is host which is going to be boolean whether it being true or false so with the live id you can pass in any value and it's going to be of type string so you should be careful with that and saving the changes so i think that's basically it So let's try to go live so we start a live you can see the ui kit zigo cloud comes with it supports the chatting you can chat over here as you can see you can chat over here you can also invite someone to join as well since i'm the only one showing to you i'm, on, I'm only going to be the participant over here so it supports many of the things so if you found this video to be useful and interesting, consider subscribing and also like the video as well. See you in our next tutorial. Until then, stay tuned.